As the New York Giants took off for their rematch with the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 42, their confidence was sky high. We would played in the last game of the season and, and played them right to the wire and felt, we, hey, we could, we could go out there and win this football game. One mindset. We're going to Arizona. We're in the Super Bowl, baby. And we're trying to go and win that thing and bring it home. We didn't care that they were 18-0. If they were going to go 19-0, they were going to have to win a street fight, and that's, that's what we had planned in Arizona. When the team landed in Arizona, the members of the national media who greeted them were given a bold prediction by wide receiver Plexico Burris. The true story behind this thing is we get to the hotel and this guy, he just happened to be the guy from the national media. And he said, Plex, any predictions for Sunday? I'm like, 23-17. I wake up in the morning, this national headline. And it came out the next day and I had to own it. The one thing that sticks in my mind when he said that and then Tom Brady comes back and says, well, I guess we can't score any points, you know, 17 points. Oh, oh. We're only going to score 17 points? <laughs> okay. That stuck in my mind. And we were the most relaxed I've, we've ever been. I mean, Coach Coffin, first of all, had the In-N-Out Burger truck come up. And you see him out there with ketchup running down his cheek, eating an In-N-Out Burger, going back for seconds. It's like, this is surreal. You have to realize that the, that the Super Bowl game was totally different than the 17th week of the season. The whole idea there was, hey, fellas, you know, stop talking about it and do it. The New York football giants and the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 42. How do the Giants pull off one of the major upsets in Super Bowl history? You're with your brothers and the only people who believed you had a chance were the people, you know, in the Giants. That that's it. And Super Bowl 42 is underway. We went into that game in Super Bowl 42 saying, we're going to dictate the outcome of this game. We're not going to let them do it. And the Giants offense was determined to set the tone on the opening drive. Jacobs. More room to run, and he lowered his shoulder as he crossed the 40. He just blew right through Brandon Merriweather. We thought that we were as physical, if, or if not more physical, than they were. And off Bradshaw, runs right, he's carrying Patriots. Kid Bradshaw showing feistiness on a power run. It's starting to feel like smash mouth football. We set the statement, that's how we do it. We Long drives, take it out of the defense. And it takes the snap, back to throw. Has time, delivers one left, completes it for first down to the Patriot 47 yard line. That's Steve Smith, four for four on third down. The opening drive that lasted forever, that was what, it was what, 10 minutes long? We marched right down the field, and I remember Rodney Harrison kind of, he was always jawing, always yapping. And I remember just talking a little smack to him and just saying, yeah, we're for real. So here comes Lawrence Times trying to cap off this long time consuming drive. Snap is good, kick on its way, end over end, and it is good. The Giants, Gino, consume 10 minutes of playing time. It gave us confidence, you know, uh, it was the first drive. We we're all pretty uh, amped up. But I think it, it kind of motivated us too, um, that we had a little unfinished business. The Giants' 16 play, just under 10 minute opening march, was the longest drive in Super Bowl history and put New York up 3-0. New England answered with a 13-play, 56-yard drive that lasted five minutes to take a 7-3 lead. Hand off Maroney, he runs right to the goal line, touchdown Patriots! And they have the lead here in Super Bowl 42 on the first play of the second quarter. But on the next five possessions, the Patriots' high-powered offense netted only 138 yards as the big blue defense flexed its muscle in a suffocating display of power and speed. Just speaking from a defense perspective, we, we went into the game very, very confident. We felt like Coach Spags put together a great scheme to really put pressure on Brady, which we knew he didn't like. And they'd never seen a defensive line like, like we had, and they're not going to be able to stop us. Good pressure up front by the defensive line, and O.C. Umanura was the first one there. We needed to get him off his spot, make him uncomfortable, knock him down, knock him down, knock him down. Don't make it easy on him to be able to just stand in there and throw the ball. We hit Brady a lot. R.D. Liner had a great thing about get off, get off, get off, get off, get off the ball. We saw O.C.'s speed be a problem. That speed shocked the Patriots O-line. Have you ever seen a defensive line like he's seen? No! Brady out of the gun. Play clock at two. 
Takes the snap and back to throw. Sets in the pocket. He's sacked by Michael Strahan back at the 32-yard line. Fourth sack of the game of Brady. But they're going to continue to bring different looks at Tom Brady. He's going to have to deal with him. Brady was also going to have to deal with the emergence of Justin Tuck. He's got a motor. He has a skill set that a lot of defensive ends can't do. Go inside, physically hold off a guard in the running game, transition into a pass rusher. That's what Tuck did. Brady back, has time, steps up, gets hit, Fumble. back, fumble the football, it's loose on the ground, they scramble for it. Who has it? Giant ball Giant at football. midfield. For most of the game, both teams struggled offensively. But as the final quarter began, Eli Manning gave his team a jump start with two big plays. Manning back to throw. Over the middle. Boss makes the catch on the run. Still on his feet across midfield. To the 40, to the 35, and knocked down at the 34-yard line. Kevin Boss. Rookie Kevin Boss's 45-yard catch and run set up the Giants' go-ahead touchdown. Tyree in motion, handoff, bump, play fake, Manning the throw to the end zone, touchdown! David Tyree on the post, and the Giants have the lead with 11.05 to go in the ball game. But as he had done all year, Tom Brady would lead his team back to regain the lead. New 20 set. Brady gets set, takes the snap, back to throw, logs one right for Moss, touchdown! And the Patriots have the lead with 2.42 to go. What a Super Bowl this has been. Can the Giants do it? They're down by four. Here it is, there's a minute and 51 seconds left. Uh, you know, we're down four, and, and there's only one option. You know, the, the score's got to be 17 to 14. 17 14 is the final, okay? 17 14, fellas. One touchdown, we are world champions. I wanted to relay to them what I really believe needed to happen. I need you guys to score a touchdown. We need to be world champions. Can Eli Manning do it? He's got to go 83 yards in 239. We were very confident. You know, there wasn't a whole lot said. I just kind of ran in. I said, all right, here we go. This is what every quarterback lives for, chance to win the game. We get to a third and five. We have a pretty good play on for, for the coverage. I'm, I'm probably going to work maybe the Tyree on the post. Manning takes the snap. Back to throw. Under pressure. Avoids the rush, and he's going to fight out of it. Still fights out of it, now throws it deep downfield to Tyree, who makes the catch at the 22-yard line. What a play by Manning. He eluded three sacks. I'm running the post route over the top, so by the time I break out my post, he's under the rest. They got a hold of me, but they're just, I'm kind of in a little panic. I, I think this isn't good, but they just never pulled me down. And I look back, and I'm like, oh, man, he's getting the sack. And I'm like, oh, he got out. Fought out of it, I rolled right, kind of saw Tyree, I saw one other guy ended up being Rodney Harris there, but I just figured, you know, I gotta give this a shot. And as soon as he let go of the ball, I was like, what is he doing? And I'm like, no, don't throw it. He fires the ball down the middle of the field, which normally you do not do that. No, not the middle of the field. From there, it was like chariots of fire, you know, music going on in the background, and you just locked in on that, on that ball. And, you know, for me, all I remember is, you know, going up to high point it. It is caught by Tyree. Catches it. Ball off his helmet, head. You couldn't tell what he did with it. And I'm just thinking to myself, are they saying he caught that? I really didn't know anything about the helmet. I just remember getting my second hand back on that ball. All I know is I got it, and I'm not letting this thing go. It's a moment in time that's literally like frozen. I just call it a miraculous play that I'm the fortunate recipient of. When he caught the ball, game was over. We knew we were going to win. I think that's when we really thought we're going to win this game because there's no way we're going to make that play irrelevant. First and 10 at the 13, 39 seconds to go. Giants down by four. Three receivers right, Burris left. So we run out and I get to the line and I see the coverage. This blitz cover. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the ball's coming. Manning calling signals, takes the snap, looks left, lobs it left, first is wide open, touchdown Giants in the left corner of the end zone. Touchdown. With 35 seconds to go, and the Giants regain the lead, Manning to Burris. 
We had Plaxico go one-on-one, -on -one and you know there was no doubt where I was going. I was throwing it, throwing it high in the corner end zone and, and let him make a play. Eli can't hike the ball fast enough, and you know he lets it go. I make a move on Ellis Hart, steps down, takes the fake, and I just run clean by him. I'm seeing Plaxico literally running into the end zone by himself, and I'm just, you know, catch that thing now. <laughs> Don't take your eye off the ball. I honestly felt like the ball was sailing for four or five seconds and you just see it going. It took forever. It really did. I think I could have ran down there and caught it before Plexico did. You know, that ball just seemed to hang up there in the end zone forever. It just, I was like, things got to come down. Hurry up and get down. And, and sure enough, it did. Boris alone, touchdown New York. Like the feeling just went out of me. I couldn't believe that it just happened. I couldn't believe it. And that is it. The New York Giants have knocked off the New England Patriots 17-14 as Tom Coughlin gets a Gatorade bath and the Giants with the most improbable win in recent memory have won Super Bowl 42. Hey, this is fairy tale stuff. Only God kind of stuff. You did. Hey, shock the world. Shock the world. Read all about it, baby. Big blue. World champions, baby. Write that down. I think it takes a second to digest, and you know, right after the game, and you just take a moment to realize, you know, what what just occurred. You know, that we won a, a Super Bowl. You go through an experience like that, and you win together. You are bound together for the rest of your lives by that accomplishment. And the greatest thing in the world is, nobody can take it away from you. When the Giants returned to the Big Apple following their triumph in Super Bowl 42, they were honored with a victory parade down New York's historic Canyon of Heroes. The Canyon of Heroes parade. To do that and to experience that in the Giant fans as far as your eyes can see. As far as your eyes can see, a Giant fan. You know, I grew up in New Orleans. I'd been to Mardi Gras. I'd seen some parades. I thought, no, I, I hadn't seen anything uh, like this. It, rows and rows of, of people kind of in between the streets going back, just trying to get a glimpse and the confetti falling. I don't think we knew how big of a deal it was going to be and how much that win meant to the fans. World champion! World! World champion! The parade was insane. I can just remember being on the floor with Ahmad and just be a part of something like that in New York City. It was surreal. Z-Man! Number one, baby! Number one, baby! You look left, okay, you look right, and then you just looked up and you're like, wow. It just didn't stop. It was really, really fun. It was really special. And, you know, it was one of those things where why not get out of the, out of the, the parade, go get in, the, in with the fans, because you guys came out here to see it, so I might as well engage with you. Like we're in a bubble. We don't know how big it is. We don't know how big this parade is going to be. We get out of the Holland Tunnel, and we make a turn, and there's a block just full of blue and white. It was unbelievable. It exceeded every bit of my expectation. Soak it in! Yeah! Super Bowl! Super Bowl champs! You can't explain it. People on lamp posts, they're on top of somebody's show, they're up in the office building. You realize the magnitude of, of how big this was. And you're thinking, this is wow. <laughs> and I'm on stage giving that speech at the parade. Then these fools are going, what are you going to do? I'm like, no, 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 don't do this. And I'm like, what the heck? One last time. I mean, this could be the last time I stop anybody out. You know what we did to you? We, we stopped you out. Hey Giants fans, Saquon Barkley here. You want to see more videos? Subscribe below.